Hi, and welcome to Watercolor with Sonia. Today we're going to do a uh, old rusted kerosene um, lantern that I found up in Skagway outside along um, my walk. And so I thought I would start by just giving you an idea. We're going to try two different sets of colors and I'm going to put them up here. And I'm just going to do a quick sketch so that you guys can see what, what is possible here. Now, I could actually... I'm just drawing this freehand, but I could use tools like uh, my, you know, little circles of even this to do a half circle and stuff like that if I needed to. So there's always ways to draw without having to know how to draw. So I'm quickly just putting in the top. It's a little bit, a little bit harder out there. These are little tiny dots in between here, and you don't even need those. Um, there's a bit of a kind of a bent. Uh, oblong, almost like a rectangle. Then we've got a little bit of this area coming out here like this. And then it gets bent sideways. And I'm going to extend that and just shorten that a bit. And there's a whole bunch of rust down here. Well, it's all rusty actually. And then there's the edge of the, of the pot at the bottom. And then a couple of legs. One that kind of just sticks out like that. And one over here and the other one is down. It does not, does not exist. It's in the grass. There are a couple little marks in here where the light comes through from the kerosene. And then there's a little bit of a logo. And um, some more little lines around here. Just put a couple. Let me just make that a little bit more even. And there's more lines in here where it comes out. So the idea is here we're just going to practice on how to, um, and I'll do a quick We'll, we'll do another sketch there, but maybe we won't even do a sketch. Maybe we'll just do it with plain water and paint and, and so that you can see the different ways you can do these things. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, set up some colors. And one of the things that I found is, okay, one used yellow to start with, one used blue to start with, one used cobalt teal to start with. So I think for my session here, we're going to use cobalt teal in this one. There we are, and then a bit of cobalt, just regular cobalt blue here. There we go, like that. And then the other one we're going to use ultramarine blue. Um, and then we're also going to use an orange. They suggest of cadmium orange, so I'm going to, who's they? I don't, it's just all the different um, videos I watched and trying to get a variety of colors. Even one used quinacridone gold, which I quite liked actually. Burnt sienna was another favorite. So we'll put the burnt sienna down here. Is That would be my go-to really, because that's the color you think that you would use. But what I found is uh, some people really felt that using the bright orange, which kind of looks kind of, let's put a little bit more, there we go, there's the bright orange. Um, helps the light pop off the, and there's definitely a lot of light up here and it gets darker as it comes down. So uh, those are a couple. Uh, they also used a magenta and a alizarin crimson. So we're just going to use an alizarin crimson here. And you could use a permanent rose too. Um, and what was the other one? Uh, burnt umber was the other one that they used. And I'm just trying, looking for my burnt umber here. Just checking if this is the burnt umber. This looks like more of a darker not quite as dark brown as I want. Hold on. This could be it here. There we go. There's the burnt umber. So a series of those colors. This is my burnt sienna out of a tube. This is the burnt sienna from my set of Opus. Okay. So having done all that, let's get started. Excuse me. Um, it's the first. All right. So I'm going to do uh, the cobalt over pretty much all of it right now. Just we'll start off with that down all the way down here. My brush has a little bit of that orange still in it, so it uh, is getting a little bit greenish, almost on the teal side. Isn't that interesting? Okay. And then really lightly up here. I won't do too much up here because I want more orange there. All right. 
right. So that's the first one. And I'm going to take a break. I'm going to draw the other one so that uh, while these dry, we can tr practice on the other one as well. So I'll be right back. Hi, and we're back. And I drew the other one even more crooked and shortened this a little bit. And now I'll show you what the original photograph looked like here, if you can see it. I'm going to uh, push it down a bit so you can see it a little bit better there. So you can see how dark it is down in the lower part and underneath here. And I forgot the little handle to put on there, so I've just put that on. Okay. And so let's continue with the first one. I drew the second one in, so it's there, but we'll start with this one right now to continue because it's dry enough. And I'm going to go in with the orange. And I'm going to put the orange right on top here. Now to me that's a bit strong, but I will... Um, see what happens here because we're going to take it and we're just going to leave some of the blue as highlights and then drop it, some of the orange just down here. Okay, I want to, where the sun is coming mostly is over here and down here and this to me is just a bit too strong so I'm going to lift it up a bit. I don't necessarily need to use the uh, flat brush it just because that's what I started off with. Although it does have the ability to have that nice tip and then that nice, just the right size to kind of bring the little bits together without having to do a lot of work. It's dark over here, lighter a little bit more over here. Okay, so and yeah, it's a bit light up on the top of the foot there. Let's put that there too. Okay, so that's it for I'm almost looking at the reflection off of my almost looks lighter on this side than here. This has some really nice speckling on it. And there's that little sign right there that I should have left. So I'm just going to lift that off and push that paint around. And lift that off a bit too. Put a little bit more over here. Okay. So we've done the orange, and now we're going to use the burnt sienna and come in while it's still wet and just drop in a little bit of the burnt sienna where we see some of that speckling. And we could actually use salt. Sometimes I have the salt handy, and I do, while it's wet to see if it will kind of do that little bit of wonderful magic, just putting a little bit on it see if we can get it to break up a bit. So we'll do the same thing down below here in just a minute. I'll get some more nice burnt sienna down here and put it right underneath this area, right where the real rusty parts are underneath here, down below there. And we'll probably put some, let's put some burnt umber in here too. burnt umber right underneath here before I put any salt in that way we have the advantage of playing with everything a little bit down at the bottom here okay and right in here too some really nice rust so I'll just pop that in there right too I could have used a smaller brush as well Eventually I will do that. I'll do those little slats on the side. Um, there's some shadow in here. Just be careful. There is that little handle that I you don't see right now and I will try and capture that by scraping it out. A little darker over here. This is the handle right in here actually. Just a little bit of the handle there. And I could even take just and just so you can see a little bit of it. Kind of comes around like that and then up. Okay, and then there's just a little bit around the edge here. All right. Let's add a bit of dark here. Okay, so salt is working a little bit there. Let's get a little bit of salt in the base. And while we're waiting for all that to happen, 
and let it dry because we'll add some details now. Let's go over here and try the different colors. So this time we're going to try ultramarine blue. This looks like phalo, so that's not what I want. That looks like indigo, gray, and I think this is it. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So ultramarine blue, here we go. Um, and then let us try again. I think we'll go with um, burnt sienna again. And I'm just trying to see if I have the quinacridone gold in here anywhere that I can use it. I'm tempted to say that one that I'm looking at is, let's just have a look here. That could be gold green. Well, we'll try it. And then the burnt ember again. Now this one we're not using any orange. We'll use the quinacridone gold afterwards. Okay, so we'll take it and we'll do a full thing with the ultramarine blue. Okay, and go right in with the burnt sienna while it's still wet this time. Because it does have some nice effects. See that? It's picking up the yellow in the burnt sienna, which I think is amazing. So this is wet on wet, and it gives you a completely different aspect. But it's bringing that orangey-ness out too. Okay, so let's pull that in there. And around here. And then... And definitely more down here. Okay, and just a little bit around here. And just we'll add it in a little bit to the texturing in here. I won't do too much. Okay. So we can add more where we think we want extra fine color. All right, and now we're going to um, use a little bit of the what I think is quinacridone gold and just try and see what happens here too. Just put a little bit more on the top here. See if we get some interesting textures. Or more rust-like features. So if I don't have enough of that, um, I can certainly go in with a little bit of red. Let's just permanent rose, I think this is. And we can add a bit of permanent rose in here, which we didn't have. There it is right there. So if you want a little bit more rusty, especially up here, we can certainly do that. Just gives you a different perspective of different colors here. So we, we're just having fun, right? Okay, now um, we're just going to Add a little bit more quinacridone gold and just see if. I'll just leave that on there what it does. Okay. And this time I'll do the handle that way first and then we'll come back and do it after. Okay, so we now have two completely different styles of rust. On this one, we're still waiting for the salt to dry, so I can't do a whole lot. But I can come in with a small brush. This is a zero. Okay. And do some details. Okay, for example, I can do the little dots at the top. The little one 
ones in here too. And there was a bit of shadowing just underneath the lid here. But it was definitely really dark underneath here. And I'm just looking, it just kind of just a little bit of an edge and then it goes really dark. And I'm going to paint around the handle. Okay, so what I'll try and do is get some slats in here because they come down. And try and expose the handle by just using the color that's there and just trying to work around it. Here's the handle and it goes from there. Um, get a little bit more dark in here. And I'm just looking, there was bits where it just kind of came down a little bit so that gives you a little bit more of the curvature maybe. There was even lines in here a little bit go across. You don't have to do as much detail but just gives you ideas. Now our salt is still working here. Why don't I put a little bit of my burnt umber just in around here a little bit and down in here a bit and why don't we highlight that a little bit because there's maybe a bit of shadow underneath that sign. There we go. It's turning purple on me. Oh that's very interesting. So around the edge of this were little lines too. And I was going to use my flat brush, but now that I have my other little one, I'll just finish off here like that. Coming around here. And just working through little details here. And there's definitely a lot of shadow under here, so we'll add the same thing under there. And it's still quite wet, so we can push down a little bit of color there. And add, I don't know how much slats are going to work there. We can add the slats in a little bit. We can come in later too and add more. Okay, and then just a little bit of the edge around there. And there's definitely dark around here as a shadow underneath. Oh, look at that, that's purple. We'll add some purple shadow in there. So let me just add that on here. That's purple. So I can go back in, find my burnt umber, which I lost, and put that back in here. All right. Now here we definitely have it because it was more wet on wet as opposed to this more wet on dry. Um, I would put a little bit more orange in my handle. I'm just picking up a little bit of orange that I have and just highlighting that a bit more. On here I'll try and do something else. So here let's go back in and I'm going to use some of the burnt sienna on here now and see if I can recapture some of these edges just by putting in that color again since the yellow really took over. And you could certainly leave some of the blue out and put in just more orange if you felt like or burnt sienna if you wanted to. It's totally up to you but it gives you two perspectives. Okay there's a lot of water there so what am I going to do? I'm going to soak it off here by just taking the brush and, and then brushing against my uh, cloth which is behind me here just there okay so if that's the case I can even do that up here and just lift that handle out this time because it's still wet look at that that's beautiful And I think leaving that white like that, I don't think I could do that here, but I'll try. Oh, yeah. It's a bit wetter here in trying to lift it. Here, 
here I don't particularly like that so I'm going to just soften that edge a bit while I'm at it. Okay, back to here. Okay, so in here, um, having done all this, now I can take this, let's use a flat brush so that you can see the difference. I'm trying to find my nice burnt umber. All I'm finding now is blue. Don't you love it? There we go. Okay. And so now what I'm going to do is just those... Oh, that's too much. So how I can avoid that, although it actually makes a really nice effect, is to take the color that I have on my brush and I'll just show you where it is on here on the tray so there's a lot of water right and I just want more pigment so I could keep adding more pigment to try and get darker pigment but that's not what I want to do I want to just take the cloth and I'll just dab it against the cloth to get the excess water out and then hopefully I have more control now this is still really wet so I'm not gonna have control over that and um, so I'm gonna have to let it dry a bit here, the salt didn't do a whole lot. It's still, it's still very, it's going to take forever. It's, it's also a very damp day. Um, so let's just add a little bit of this burnt umber down below here for shadow while I'm waiting for everything to dry. Um, you can add in a little bit of gray in this one if you wanted to, just to make it easy and fast to get that shadow underneath there. I can also use that um, under here a bit. Oops, I just missed that handle. It's also making it a bit more brownish, so I can do it that way. I can add that in there. I'll add in the color here so you can see it. There is that gray, which has turned brown because of all these colors in here. And actually quite a nice dark Oxford brown too. Now, given that this is so small, you're probably just better to just highlight some of the shadows in there and not worry about the little slats. Get some of the handle shadow. And then in here in the handle, maybe just get some of the little bits you know, around that edge of that handle. Because that's quite nice. Okay. And we didn't put in the um, little label there. So we can go around that label and then lift if we want to. Oh, my cloth is too wet. Let's go to another cloth. There we go. And lift that label. So we've got that in there and then we can highlight it by just going in and going around it a bit. Uh, so what else can we do? This is all still too wet to do anything. Now, if it is really that wet and you want to try it, you can even use some texturing by just dabbing down with your cloth and getting that dry or using a hair dryer to do that. Now, I'm going to go back in with my dark hair. Yeah, it's still too wet to really capture anything here. So I'm going to have to wait. Let's try. So what I'm using right now is I have um, straight pigment from my tray, from my, and I'm just, actually this, just just adding a few highlights here. There we go. I keep forgetting that that's a little drop there. And then down here, there's interesting little slats in there. And it's picking it up a little bit now. It's still quite loose. So I could just play around with that. Add a bit more in here. A little bit more shadow down here. And then how about that rust uh, broken down and eaten away in here. And a little bit of a lip. And then again, the lip, which is down here, which we started to do the shadows. So now let's get that shadow really in there. Okay, and so we're not doing any background in this. We're just having fun with the different colors. And you can see the difference between using an ultramarine blue or we never even use the cobalt in here. 
if I brought the cobalt in, let's just see if I add a little bit of cobalt in here. See how it changes. So I would lay it, do it more as a lower uh, first layer before I would go in with the other oranges and stuff. Let's add a bit more of that to the base here. Okay, so you have one more dry image and one more dark image, and that gives you our rust for our stove pipes. So hopefully, I, I will do a much larger version of this. Now, you can also spatter, my favorite thing to do, right? Um, so if I was gonna spatter, I definitely wanna spatter some orange in there. Maybe even an orange with a little bit more yellow in it to make it more interesting. Trying to get more water here. Oh, this is too much pigment here. Okay, so let's just see what happens. Let's do a little bit of burnt umber. No, so burnt sienna first. And when we do it larger too, you get the opportunity definitely to go in and, and highlight more and uh, do some more detail once it's completely dry. We, you know, the one thing we didn't do in this one was even bother with the little dots on top there. Again, it's been so small that is it really worth it? I don't know. Now, the one thing I didn't do with some of the cobalt Teal. I'm just going to pop that in there. Here I'm going to do a little ultramarine blue. There we go. So that is our project. I hope you're going to enjoy doing some rust. Now if you have another type of um, uh, chain or image that you want to try, um, like a rusted old hubcap or I don't know, a, a front wheel of a car or something that you have bring the image along and we'll try it. Uh, this was just one of the first images that I found that it was really nice and rusty that I could play with. All right, so going back, I just want to show you what our original um, kerosene lantern looked like. There it is right there. And we could definitely darken that a bit in here a bit if we wanted to later when it was wet. But there's your two images. So thanks for watching.